I'm going to show you how to assemble the split flap control board. This video assumes that you have some familiarity with soldering already, so I'm going to speed through things pretty quickly. We'll start with the RGB LEDs. These are surface mount components and the trickiest to solder, so if you don't have much experience soldering, you may want to put these aside and come back to them later. However, I like to start with them since other components will get in the way. Just make sure you don't leave these till the very end. Make sure to get the orientation correct. The LEDs have a notch in one corner that aligns with a right angle marking on the silk screen in the top left corner. These can be soldered in place by touching a tin soldering iron to one pin and pad to tack it in place. Then I come back with the iron and solder to connect the remaining pins. Repeat this process for the other three LEDs. I'm going to skip ahead here because it's not that exciting. Now we'll install the Arduino pin headers. These are the connectors on the bottom side that will plug into the Arduino. First, we'll install the three pin male header into the holes labeled Arduino, D4, D5, D6 in the center of the board. Next, we'll install the two x three female header into the holes labeled ISP. Next, we'll install the two pin male header into the VIN holes. Once those are in place, we'll flip the board over and solder them from the top side. Now we'll install the 470 ohm resistor, which is yellow, purple, brown. We'll fold the leads and insert it into R9 right in the middle of the board. Resistors don't have polarity, so it doesn't matter which way the resistor is facing when you insert it. Then flip over the PCB and solder it from the bottom. We'll go ahead and clip those leads with diagonal cutters to get them out of the way. Next, we'll focus on the top left corner. We'll start with a two pin male header, which goes into JP1. And again, we'll flip the PCB over and solder it in place from the bottom. Next, we have the two LEDs. The yellow LED goes on top into D1, labeled motor plus, and the green LED goes into the bottom D2, or 5 volts. The polarity is really important on these, so you need to make sure you put them in the right way. The longer leads are on the outside. Be careful when soldering these as the plastic on the LEDs can melt if they get too hot. Again, we'll clip the leads off. Now we've got a 2.2 K ohm resistor, which is red, 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 and this will go into R1. Solder that in place and clip the leads. You get the idea. Next, we've got a 220 ohm resistor, which is red, red, brown, and that goes into R7. All right, we're making good progress. Now we'll tackle the capacitors. We've got a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and that will go into C1 at the top of the board. Again, make sure to get the polarity correct on this. The negative or minus side of the capacitor should line up with the shaded portion on the PCB. Here I'll bend the leads outward to hold it in place while I insert a few more components before soldering all of them. Now we've got another 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, which goes into C3. Again, make sure to get the polarity correct. And last for the capacitors, we've got a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which goes into C2. The polarity doesn't matter on this one, so it can go either way. Now we'll solder up all three of those capacitors and trim the leads. All right, it's time to work on the sensor connectors. There are three separate four pin male headers that form these connectors. We'll place all three at once and use one of the sensor cables to hold them in alignment while we're soldering them. Make sure that the headers are sitting flush against the PCB before soldering. And now I'll fast forward through a bunch of boring solder. Next come the sensor resistors. These are all 47 K ohm resistors, which are yellow, purple, orange. We'll fold the leads on all of these and they go into R3, R4, R5, R6, and R10. Again, these are resistors, so the polarity doesn't matter and you can put them in either way around. And as you might have guessed, we'll solder those up and trim the leads. We'll do the power connector next. Hopefully it's pretty obvious where this one goes. 
make sure to get plenty of solder on these large connections to hold the connector in place. Now we'll install the white motor connectors, but before we get to those, I wanted to remind you to install the RGB LEDs if you haven't already done so. It's only going to get harder from here. For the motor connectors, make sure you install them the right way. They should match the silkscreen diagram on the PCB, and the notches in the plastic should face outward. They won't look right if you install them the wrong way around. And 20 solder joints later, we're ready to move on to the last few components. We'll install the motor driver chips next, labeled MIC5842. I like to start by gently pressing the leads against the table to bend them inward so they'll line up with the holes on the PCB. For these chips, you need to make absolutely sure you're putting them in the right way. The notch on the chip should face to the left and should match the drawing on the PCB. If you get this wrong, it's going to be a fun time trying to desolder 18 pins without destroying anything. Good luck. All 36 of these pins get soldered in place, making sure not to let the chips get too hot, which could break them. Now that we've installed the motor drivers, we're on to the final component, which is the sensor input chip. The notch on the 74HC165 chip should point toward the bottom of the PCB. Solder that up, and you're done! Now you're ready to start calibrating and testing your split flap display. Enjoy!